Hello and welcome to Good or Bad. Well, it's here yet again. Halloween. The night we all hide behind boarded up windows while demonic little humans threaten to destroy us unless we appease them with sugar filled snacks. Trick or treat! Save them! Or maybe that's just me. Well, this year is different. I plan to embrace tonight by ignoring the toffee craving ghosts and ghoulies by reviewing slugs. Yep, that's right, slugs. Released in 1988 and directed by J.P. Simon, this movie is about a rural community that is being terrorised by... Killer Slugs. How can this movie not be fun? I may regret saying that later, but never mind potential regrets. Let's get this review started. You weren't kidding when you said we were going fishing, huh? That's what I said, darn it. If all the acting is like this, I am in for a very bad night. A very, very bad night. Oh, hey! There's something slimy down there. I don't like it. <laughs> okay, that was good. Hey! What the hell? Did the slugs just pull him under? How can slugs do that? How can slugs even survive underwater? 1 minute 20 seconds in and it's already not making any sense. You would think a film about killer slugs would make more sense than this. <laughs> Humanity will never discover our true power. Was there really a need to state that it's Slugs the movie? I mean, we're not going to think it was the book, are we? I mean, it's on screen. Things are happening. Things are moving. There is audio, video. It's obvious. OK, so now we have the intro credits. Guessing they were going for the James Bond route with this one. And I'll be honest, the soundtrack over the credits is pretty good. But enough of that. We see what the film labels as a whiner walking home to his very big house. This already isn't adding up. Maybe he's just squatting. Who knows? Well, I'd like to think so. But A, he says it's his house, and B, he has some mail addressed to him, which is an eviction notice. OK, if this guy has so little money, why does he live in such a large house? I don't know about you, but I expect my killer slug movies to have more understandable housing scenarios. Well, never mind about his house, because he sits down and gets killed by the slugs of death. Oh, I'm just trying to add a little drama to this. OK, moving back to his house. Sorry, it's bugging me. If this guy's purpose was literally just to up the body count within the first six minutes of the movie, why couldn't it have just been the same guy living in a house, but without the eviction notice? What purpose does it serve? We don't care about his financial difficulties. Well, for someone who doesn't care, I am fixating on it a little bit. But it's bugging me. It makes no sense. OK, moving on. We see our main character, Mike Brady, played by Michael Garfield. And then we meet one of the other main characters, Don Palmer, played by Philip McHale. Good to meet you. Uh, funny, but you don't look anything like a wicked beach of the north to me. What? What? You mean this isn't the Wizard of Oz set? OK, just to clarify all that, the wicked bitch of the north thing was because Mike's wife is a teacher and her students hate her. They don't like my homework. No, I'm pretty sure they just hate you. After all, a bad teacher does blame her homework. Anyway, the next day at the police station, our main character Mike, who is the county health inspector, has an appointment. But before that, we hear a bone-chilling telephone conversation. Listen, Mary, and I can't just drop everything here and come running home to kill a few snails. Snails, slugs, what the hell's the difference? Well, I'll tell you one similarity between them. Neither of them are scary. But moving on from that, Mike arrives at the police station. Hey, great, Sheriff. It's two minutes after eight. That's right, son, after eight. Our appointment was for eight o'clock. Good to know. They have some drunks to evict, so they drive down to the house. But the music they play over this scene seems a bit out of place. It seems like something that would be played over something grand, epic, and monolithic, and just a little bit cheesy, but certainly not a cop car just driving down the street. It turns out the drunk they have to evict was the guy that died earlier in the movie. Well, at least they are following up on the eviction notice plot, Fred. You know, I still don't see why it was needed. Couldn't they have just had some neighbours report the missing person, and then the cops come to investigate, and then they see the body, they call the county health inspector who comes to investigate, and then we are in the exact same situation as we are now? Sorry to keep going on about it, but this eviction letter befuddles me. This is class A befuddlement. Can you tell I like saying that word? Don't tell anyone, but I think I underplayed the subtlety. 
So Mike and the Sheriff discussed theories on what killed the old guy. What's your bright idea, Mr. Health Inspector? <laughs> oh, rats maybe? At least rats would be scarier. Not very scary, but we're talking about slugs here, come on! No one ever suspects the slugs! They get a call saying there's a blockage in one of the sewers, so they talk about sending requests down the appropriate channels. Oh, Jesus, now since one of the goddamn sewers my business, tell her to, to call the sanitation department. Well, if this isn't edge of your seat entertainment, I don't know what is. But Mike concedes and meets his best buddy Don, the sewer man, and they go out to talk to the woman with the sewer issue. I want something done about that smell. I'm not on welfare, I pay my taxes. Whoa, do you suppose maybe we could start at the beginning? We can start anywhere you want, young man, as long as we end up getting results. It's like she is hostile but doesn't quite know why. Okay, so Don goes down into the sewer while Mike, uh, doesn't. He has a look around and finds a blockage in one of the pipes. Okay, how the hell are slugs, even radioactive slugs, doing that? You know, there are so many other animals that have greater scare potential than slugs. Let's see, shall we? Snakes, birds, crocodiles, monkeys... But you probably wanted something that hadn't been done as much. Well, there's better answers to that, too. We've got ants, pretty much any type of insects, hedgehogs... Oh, I'd like to see hedgehogs from hell. And, um, let's see... Rats! Pretty much anything but slugs. Or snails. And after some more mismatched music... I don't know, the movie seems to like it. We see a bunch of kids that are planning on going to a Halloween party. And I am absolutely sure that this will play a huge part in the plot. Here's a man doing some gardening. And guess what's lurking around the corner? Or more precisely, in his gardening gloves. Slugs! The slugs laid in wait in his gloves. And then, well, realistically, if you put your hand in a glove that had some small, not poisonous at all creature in, you would probably feel a little bit of pain, pull your hand out and chalk it up to an inconvenience. But because these are super slugs, they are not letting him take his glove off. I know, I know, it doesn't make any sense, but just go with it. I mean, the only way this would make sense is if the slugs had telekinetic powers. That would be awesome! Why don't they have telekinetic powers? Okay, so this man tries everything from cutting the glove off to cutting his hand off, and in the process he spills some highly flammable stuff and... KABOOM! Well, at least he took the slugs down with him. That's if they can't survive explosions. Who knows, clearly these beings are beyond our comprehension. Mike learns of the explosion and because they were his friends he has a complete emotional breakdown. Jesus. They were nice people. I, mean, I liked them a lot. Hey, for how expressionless the acting is in this movie, that was quite heart-moving. He takes a whole three seconds to recover, and then he spots a huge-ish slug in the garden, so he goes to poke it in the face, and... It bites him! So he goes to a scientist to find out more about these creatures. Meanwhile, there is a woman making a salad, and we make a shocking discovery. The creatures of evil are found in lettuce! LETTUCE! Basically, she makes dinner and her husband eats it, and then later on in the movie... We'll find out later! Mike gets to the laboratory of answers and finds the most enthusiastic character in this movie. It's somewhere that you can actually put a snail or slug on the edge of a razor blade, and it can crawl right across it without ever touching the metal. Fascinating, isn't it? As a contrast to the bland, it's really refreshing. And that's while talking about slugs. Yeah, he is more interesting to listen to talking about slugs than anyone else in this movie is, which is a real testament to how boring everyone else is. Dr. Enthusiasm discovers that these slugs are killers, as one of them escapes its prison and takes down a hamster. Meanwhile, the slugs claim two more people. Nah, <laughs> the humans will never understand our true power. <laughs> Can you imagine the potential desperation of the marketing for this movie? They are not fast. They are not scary. They have to be in very large groups to be any kind of a threat. Fear the slugs. They are coming for a theatre near you. Very, very, very slowly. Back at the garden, Mike is utterly bewildered with his slug problem. Why don't you try salt? Hey! No, really, that's a good idea. Here, I'm serious. Go get it, hoard it, fight for it, for salt is the last defense of humanity. Hey, what's up? Sheriff inside? Yes, he's upstairs. Mike babbles on about his killer slug idea and gets left out the door. 
I swear there's a joke in there, but for the life of me, I just can't find it. Mike gets a call about a discovery in the sewers. They have found half-eaten rats, cats, and even a dog. Which gets his attention, so he goes to try and pinpoint the exact nature of the threat. He discovers that the town used to be a toxic waste plant, which must be how the slugs have gotten so powerful. But never mind that, remember the guy who ate his wife's cooking? Well, he hasn't been feeling very well, and then this happens. <laughs> his brain just exploded with slugs and worms. <laughs> Funny. I think my mind is beginning to be affected by all these bad movies. Help! They collect samples of the worms that exploded out of the guy's head and take them to Doctor Enthusiasm. The Doctor explains what kind of environment slugs usually breed in, and they come to the conclusion it must be the sewer. Why did he take them that long to figure this out? There has been so much focus put on the sewer in this movie. Several strange things have happened in the sewer. I mean, did that not even raise an eyebrow? Mike has to rush home because the... Ugh, tap crap. He calls the sheriff, but he isn't there, so he reassures his wife that everything's gonna be okay. I have to go now. I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, Michael, I think I'm losing my mind. Just hang in there. You'll be fine. Oh, dear God, I don't think I can take this much longer. Every line that guy says oozes blandness. How can one performance be so bad? Okay... Mike goes over to the water supply control place and tells the guy in charge what's going on. Hold on. Mutated slugs? Contaminated water system? What the hell are you talking about? Phillips, listen to me. We're facing a disaster here. You need a long vacation, pal. This is no time to argue. Who's arguing? I'm telling you you're nuts. To be fair, his presentation did come off a little batshit crazy. He gets thrown out of the office and then we cut to the mayor's office where he is about to sign some contract that is... Well, never mind, it's not really important. Well, of course, I only thought you people were prepared to sign the papers. <laughs> Why not? We might as well do it. Did he forget his line towards the end of that sentence? Needlessly long scene short, he gets left out of the room. You mean to tell me... If I turn on the water tap, a killer slug is going to come out and get me? <laughs> Dr. Enthusiasm has created a formula that kills the killer slug, so a plan begins to form. Deploy the chemical in the nest and kill them all. And after recruiting Don into his daring plan, he needs to go to rescue his wife. The time is upon us. For years we have been shunned into the icky category. But this day humanity will learn to fear the slugs. Kill Oh, God, am I glad to see you. Don asks how he intends to make sure all the slugs are in the same place, but Mike assures him everything is under control. Essentially, he will use a bag of meat that will get their attention. But wouldn't their presence alone do that? Meanwhile, at the Halloween party... Have some pizza. I don't want any pizza. Try some. I don't like it. Bug off. You will try the goddamn pizza. Eat it. Eat it. Wait, why is some guy trying to get a girl to eat a pizza? Am I watching a different movie? Okay, they confirm the details of their plan, which is essentially to lure them all into a chamber beneath a manhole, and when they are all in, they will exit the chamber, and the Doctor will cover them all in the anti-killer slug formula. And then we cut back to the Halloween party, and the pizza guy from earlier is... um... trying to rape the girl. Why? For what purpose? This is a film about killer slugs. Why do we need this? What purpose does it serve? Okay, the girl manages to escape into the sewer, only to get killed by the slugs. Well, wasn't that pointless? Right, so Mike and Don make their way through the sewer, and I swear at no point during the end do I ever feel like they are in the lion's den, so to speak. It just looks like they are walking safely through a sewer that happens to have some slugs in. After an exhilarating scene of them electrocuting some slugs, they change the plan. So the Doctor has to dump the chemicals down a different manhole. Does it really matter, though? Okay, let's wrap this up. They find their main breeding ground. Don gets pushed into the water with the slugs, they kill him, and then they dump the chemicals and kill the slugs. Which gives us the big fiery ending! But wait, one of them survived! Bet your ass one of us survived! What were you saying about slugs not being scary? Trick or treat, mother...
So that was Slugs. It was dull, but in a laughable way. The acting was beyond awful, the gore effects were occasionally decent, any CGI was just terrible, and this movie was just all round pathetic. Slugs aren't scary. They're not. They're just not. So with that said, have a happy Halloween, and I've gotta go clear up a dead slug. See you next time. Soon humanity will learn to fear us. They will fear us all.